Hello and welcome back to another video. Today I'll be showing you how to add a drop shadow to objects and text inside of Inkscape. So here I have my composition we'll be working with. For starters, make sure you have the selector tool active over here. Next, come over here and select the object you wanna add the effect to. Then finally go to filters, shadows and glows, drop shadow. So that's going to open up the filter dialog here for the drop shadow filter. The first thing you want to do is make sure live preview is checked so you can see the effect in real time. And you will have three sliders here for the various settings. The first is going to be the blur radius. So that's just going to have the blur go further out, spread further out. If you drag this to the right or if you drag it to the left, it's going to bring it back in and you can go all the way to zero if you want and you'll see it won't be spread out at all. So that's just adding a little Gaussian blur to this or Gaussian blur as the fancy people say. Below this slider you have the horizontal offset slider. This is gonna do exactly what it sounds like. It'll offset the actual drop shadow to the left or right or in other words along the horizontal axis of whatever the object is. So if you drag this to the left it'll give it a negative value which will shift the shadow to the left of the center of the object. And if you drag it to the right, it'll give it a positive value that shifts the drop shadow there to the right. If you middle click on this and let's just type zero and hit the enter key, it will have it perfectly centered there. So keep that in mind. We're going to offset this a little bit to the left. Below that you have vertical offset. So same thing, except we're going up and down with the offset now. If you drag it to the left, it's gonna give you a negative value and it will offset it above the object. And if you drag it to the right, it'll give that a positive value and that is going to offset it below the main object. So let's just adjust this. So you also have a shadow type. Right now it's set to outer. We're gonna get into the other shadow types here momentarily, but you do have another tab here called blur color. And this allows you to change the color of the actual blur itself or of the actual drop shadow. Right now I have it set to black. You've got your color wheel here that you can select a new color from. So just by clicking and dragging your mouse, you can also click and drag the color wheel to just change its position there. Or you can use any of the sliders here. So in this case, we have the HSL color wheel selected. So we have hue, saturation, lightness as our three main sliders. And then our last slider here is the alpha slider that determines how opaque or transparent the actual uh, drop shadow is. You can also check the use objects color option and that'll change the drop shadow color to whatever color your object is that you have selected. Let's uncheck that. Finally, you can manually type in a hex value here. So for example, I know the DMD blue for my branding is 1F18DA. So that will automatically change the colors there to that blue color and it may take clicking off of here. Let's hit the enter key to update the actual color here. That didn't do it. Let's uncheck live preview, check it, and now it's back there. So now we have the color actually updated to my blue color. So you can change the actual color wheel. Right now it's HSL. You can go HSV, RGB, CMYK, HS Love, and CMS. So for example, if I went RGB, the sliders would change there, and now I can adjust the actual RGB values. Let's just stick with HSL though. And I want this to be black so I can just drag the lightness slider to black. The color will update there. But once you're ready to apply the effect, come over here and click apply and it will apply that drop shadow. If you only want to apply the one drop shadow effect, you have to manually close out this window or exit out of the window. I do kind of wish for user experience sake that they would just have this close automatically. However, you can add multiple drop shadows to a single object. So that's one benefit of this not closing out. So for example, let's come back to options and change the shadow type to inner. And by the way, make sure live preview is checked. It will uncheck it once you apply the first drop shadow. And let's come over to blur color and just change this color to white. So there you can see we get a totally different effect with this. It makes this almost look like a little 3D object, especially since we have the drop shadow we just applied last time. And now we can come over here and click apply again. And now we have a second shadow on here. So let's close out of this. We can also add our drop shadow effect to some text. So what I can do is click on my text. If I wanted to add this to multiple lines of text simultaneously, I can shift click on another line of text and it'll select that text. 
I just happen to have these in two different text boxes. But once again, I can go to Filters, Shadows and Glows, and Drop Shadow. So it's going to bring up our Drop Shadow filter, and it's going to have whatever settings we used last. Once again, manually click the Live Preview option to get that Live Preview. Let's come back to Options. So we've shown both the outer and inner shadow types. You also have outer cutout. So that's going to give you an outer drop shadow, which is the standard drop shadow, except it's going to drop out the color of the actual text. And it's going to leave behind a cutout of the text so you get this cool effect. You also have inner cutout, so same thing, except it only leaves behind the inner shadow. And finally, you have shadow only, so that's going to drop out the text entirely and just have the drop shadow left. So let's change this back to outer and come back to blur color and just drag the lightness slider all the way to the left to give us black. I'll click apply and close out. So now we have drop shadow on this text. So the cool thing about the drop shadow filter inside of Inkscape is that it's non-destructive, which means you can go back at any time and either change the actual text or you can adjust the filter settings. So for example, let's grab the text tool Click on this and let's type invisible. So as you can see, we've got brand new text here, but it's applied the same exact drop shadow effect to this. Let's grab the selector tool. I'm just going to drag the scale handle in while holding control. Let's just reposition this. So I've got new text, but what if I wanted a new effect on this? Well, what I can do is go to filters, filter editor. And now we've got this little editor dialog that allows us to edit each aspect of the filter. I'm not going to lie, it's a little confusing because it doesn't use the same dialog that you use when you originally apply the shadow. So not super user friendly. However, you can change the color of the shadow using this flood line. So as long as that's selected, you'll get these options for color and opacity. So let's say we want to change this to white. Exit out of there. And then you can increase or decrease the opacity. I'll just increase it slightly. You can change the blur. So you can use this slider to increase or decrease the blur. If you go to offset, it allows you to change the horizontal and vertical offset that we set before. Again, it uses different names for things. I don't know why. I would assume this is probably how it's coded, like raw coded into the actual program. So delta X and delta Y instead of horizontal and vertical. And then the most confusing of all is you've got two instances of composite. So you have to sort of create the right combination of things here to get this to display properly. Uh, I believe, I don't think I did it right. Oh, there it is. Okay, so I have it set to operator out for the second one and for the first one operator over. And now we get this cool invisible effect. This is an ideal, but it is a non-destructive way to edit your filter after the fact. And we can always come over here, exit out of here. Now we have our adjusted filter. If you wanted to remove the filter entirely, all you have to do is click on whatever text or object has the effect and go to filters, remove filters, and it'll get rid of all the filters that are on that object. All right, so that's it for this tutorial. Hopefully you liked it. If you did, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and click the bell icon to be notified each time I have a brand new tutorial. You can check out any of the links to my resources in the description of the video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.